Maurice was such a, a person. He was such a player and such a dealer in the game. It was like when I first met him, it was in 1960, in the spring of 1960. He was such a guy. He was, Maurice was then in his 40s. And uh, he, he wore a very nice suit. He would be in a pinstripe suit with black alligator cowboy boots, a big, fine, nice uh, Texas hat. He, he had a small mustache, a very small, keen mustache, and he was a real black-headed man. And he smoked long Mexican cheroots, dark papered Mexican cheroots. And uh, this man had a charisma about him that was just, oh, it was just unbelievable. Everybody that met him, they just got a a charge of being around him and from the amount of charisma that he had. He would, everybody that walked off from him would have a smile on their face. He was that type of a character. And there was a few that had frowns on his, their faces when they left, but it was the ones that he wanted to have a frown on their face. He would mess with people's minds when he would be talking to them in such a way as the stories that he would tell them was like uh, the way when I first met him. There I was, just a young beginner in the game, 20, 21 years old, 1960 in the spring, and uh, I had read a few uh, of the Game Dog magazines, a uh, Pit Dog Report uh, put out by Pete Sparks in those days, and uh, I had uh, had some Game Dogs for a little old, around a year, somewhere around a year, maybe a little more than a year, a little longer than a year. And uh, I had heard of Maurice, but that, about, that was about as much as of a beginner as I was, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with uh, too many different names. There were just a few different names that I was familiar with, such names as Earl Tudor, George Sadler, Joe Covina, uh, Gaboon Trahan, and that, that, that was about the, the consent of it as to the people that was active at that time. And uh, that, that was about the only names that I knew of when I went to my first show in Louisiana there that Gaboon Trahan. I met Maurice, it was right outside the front gate of the barn, and it, uh, I never will forget it, he was just, uh, this man, he had a way of picking up on everybody he was talking to, and he, he got to telling me some stories and uh, asking me about different people in my area and everything, and I, I recognized a few of the names of the people that he called out and everything. And uh, he got to telling me about why don't I come down and visit him sometime. He told me he had well over a hundred game dogs there on his place. He said he had a 2,500 acre ranch and had all kinds of cattle. Said we'd go deer hunting right out, out of his backyard. As a matter of fact, he, he said he hunted deer with bow and arrows. And this man was just, you know, he, uh, he just left me with my mouth hanging open and just a, you know, awe, like, you know, of amazement that this guy would invite me down and everything, and here I am, just a stranger, a rank beginner, getting into the game and everything. Oh, this man is something else, really. Quite a guy. Well, it, uh, after that show, it wasn't but about a month or so later, Right around, uh, within a month or so, me and a couple of my friends in this area, we decided to make the trip to San Antonio to go visit Maurice. And so, uh, we get down there and we call and he tells us where we're at and everything. We wasn't but just a little way down the road and everything. He tells us how to get there. And so we go pulling up and when we pull into the place, we, you know, well, this really wasn't what we was uh, expecting. But it was, it was a place out in the country, and it was, uh, I remember they had a big water tower there by his house where he lived, and then they had two houses. It was a big frame house of about a six or eight room 
frame house. It was a nice frame house. Uh, it, it it was pretty old, uh, but uh, it was it was still a nice nice home. And then on down about uh, I guess maybe uh, 150 feet, maybe uh, somewhere around 150 feet, sort of down the hill there on the same road was a little two-room house. And uh, then uh, there was a little barn on down beside it. Well, where Maurice told us to pull up it was in the driveway, which was a, a big driveway area, there by the little two-room house. And we pulled up in there, and as we was getting out, Maurice come walking out of this little two-room house with his pajamas on and his alligator boots and his he had a Texas straw hat on, and he had a big smile on his face, and he was just laughing. And he had about 20 dogs there on his place. And behind his house there was blackjack trees that had cable runs running all between the trees and had dogs on them, and he had some beautiful dogs, real nice fed dogs. They was, he kept all his dogs on the heavy side. But they was they was just uh, he kept them uh, worm free and they was just uh, beautiful dogs they beautiful dogs. Well, we got out you know and uh, went in and this, this this little house was it was what was called a a, a cowboy shack it was called a, a a place for the hired hand you know and. It wasn't exactly what I, I was expecting, a big two, three thousand acre ranch with a big ranch house, you know, as to my conversation with Maurice when I first met him in the spring. Well, it, uh, as we talked on and talked on there, it, uh, Maurice was at a time of being between a rock and a hard place. As I learned, you know, as I learned Maurice, that that was... Uh, uh, a big area of his life between a rock and a hard place at times. Maurice was very much up and down in his life. His lifestyle was unbelievable, uh, unbelievably interesting. And the stories that was around his lifestyle was just unbelievable, especially the stories that he told about his lifestyle. Those was the ones that was unbelievable. But uh, and we got to know Maurice. The uh, Maurice was a man that he knew every thief, every outlaw in the state of Texas, and many thieves and outlaws throughout the United States. But he knew every one of them in Texas, and every one of them knew him. And he was a he was very much of a con man type of a person. And he, uh, he, he, he had, he, it was as if he would look at us, as if he looked at us in such a way as if to say, are you so stupid that you believed everything that I said? You know, that was his personality, you know. In other words, you wouldn't even mention the fact of where's the 2,500 acres? Or where's all those thousands of cows you own you was telling me about? And you know, those hundreds of dogs. In other words, you wouldn't even think of asking him, you know, where was that stuff? Because he had a way of expressing himself as if he was almost asking you, were you stupid enough to believe everything that I told you? And that, that was the charisma, the character style of Maurice. Maurice was a... In, in, a, in a way, he was like a man of a deceit, a man of deceit, deceived. He, he would deceive everyone in such a way as he, it was like he would really enjoy seeing just how far he could go with everybody he met. That his style of dealing was like he was, there was always a number of things in each dog deal that he dealed in such a way as he would change their breeding 
of a lot of the dogs that he deal. He, he wouldn't put out the true pedigrees on the dogs. He would change their breedings there. It, to him, it was like he wanted to know how everybody's dog was bred, but he didn't want the people to know how their, their own dog was bred. He wanted to know, but he didn't want them to know. It was like it gave him an edge. Years, it was very interesting, very interesting as to Maurice's life style and his part in the game the way he lived his life, and I've seen it happen in the last, I knew in the last 19 years of his life. And I've I seen the change. He had been in the game eight years when I met him. And I knew what he had to start with, and I knew what he had when I got to know him there, and I watched his yard change over the years. And in the, in the 60s, Maurice began dealing dogs, and he could deal with people like it was just amazing. You talk about a used car dealer. A used car dealer couldn't come close to dealing with Maurice Carver. Maurice Carver had a deal for everybody. I'm talking he had a deal for everybody. He could deal a man into buying a piece of paper from him. When old Waddy that piece of paper, he had a deal for him. It, this was his character. And it was, it was as if everyone in the game knew everyone at that time. Everyone knew each other. And no one wanted no one to know that they had been dealing with Maurice because everybody would know that he beat you in some way because Maurice was the type of person that beat everybody he dealt with. He really beat him in some way or another. He put it on him so bad, some, one way or another, that everybody would know that he, he did it to you too. So people tried to keep their dealing with Maurice to themselves. But as it turned out, I don't know of hardly anyone in the game that didn't deal with him one time or another. And everybody that ever met him liked him. He had that charisma about him that he could get along with anybody. And if someone couldn't get along with him, he would single that person out and work on them in such a way that sooner or later they'd be friends with him. In other words, he would just stay on them and work on them until the way he, he just had a, a charisma about him that everyone liked him. Everyone always liked him. Everybody deal with him. Through those 60s, he... he he had some good bred dogs there on his yard that came from that breeding he made from Diabo and Black Widow.